photo rallies. They could be one of the most colorful corals around. And they may look innocent, but they're actually really toxic and potent. In this video, we'll be showing you guys how to carefully frag him without getting yourself hurt. Hi, this is Eddie B here today. And you're probably thinking, what is that video on the proto pally there and some coral tools that get used in reference with that proto pally. Now, Steve Darley can tell you what it actually is pally toxin and what they have to do with proto pally. So, what so what, what, how bad are pally toxins? They're the worst. Absolute worst. Every one can be different, some stronger than others. Native wines used to tip their spears with protopally toxins, or poison arrows and spears. Basically, those type, which is this exact one here, one of the most lethal in the world, you get stabbed by that, and it's just a matter of time. Now, You're going it, down. Now, is it true some of these pally, proto pallets can be one of the most powerful corals, but also the most toxic? There's some actually very powerful variations of this. Oh, very powerful. But it, it's exposed to cuts. Simply by having even a scab like this, or the juice going in your eye, is that true you can actually look all yelled up and puffed up from them, and even end up in the ER? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a woman in Alaska that miscarried, and her husband got sent to the emergency room because of pallid toxins. She actually opened the bag in the water, under the water, they can aerosol the toxins out, meaning a fine mist or almost a gas, but it's actually a waste of paper. And it was under the water, she opens the bag, and it still got up and into their lungs. She, he quit breathing, and she miscarried, lost lost their child because of protopally toxin. Now, we're going to go some through techniques of how to handle these safely, and also some techniques of what to do if you actually have been, had the pally toxin on your skin or it injected or the juice went right into your eye while you were fragging these. Steve Donnelly is going to show you some of the things, first safety measures you have to take before even to touching the, uh, the proto pallies. Mm -hmm. He's going to show us now right now. Make sure, honestly, you are just have one glove here because I'm left handed, but you want both shoulder gloves going all the way up, baby. I mean, you want to you want to just jam that thing right up in there, like that. You don't want this stuff getting anywhere. Sleeves good, protected, and if you get spray on here, you want to throw that away. But this right here, when you're done, or if you get any on your hands, that don't put it in your eyes, people. But bleach in about a one to four solution with water, and make sure you mark it so nobody comes along and drinks it. Just happened before. By me. Anyway, and you just wash your hands with this and face it gone and that will take off gone for the slime. This will neutralize the toxin breaking down the protocol neurotoxin. Alright, so anyways, we got the glove, we got the glasses, we got the now this isn't just a regular respirator, this is a carbon uh, chemical respirator. Preferably put it on first, and then wait, there's another part, and then and while he's putting that on, let me explain why the respirator is good. Because I actually read an article of a guy, he was taking live rock out of his tank and he put it to boil to kill off all algae, just basically make that rock dry again. And it had some protopallies in there. Him and his wife almost died that night of just the vapor and the smell of that pallet toxin. So that's why it's important to wear that respirator. Alright, so this is basically how we should look right here. Implements are good, and just give out a shot a second here. When you're grabbing your proto pallies, this is a little small for grabbing such a big thing, but I got a pretty good grip. So you don't even want to touch this thing. If you got a bare hand, use your tools. <laughs> then use your glove. Never come into direct contact. Now even the water you can have if you see that slime. Look at this. This slime coming off of here. This is pure toxin death. We really don't want to keep letting it go in with the fish. So we're going to put it down here. Now, in a smaller tank, if this has been a 30 gallon tank, most of the inhabitants would be dead by now. This particular type. 
so many look similar to this, um, but they, uh, once you put them under nice tinted lighting, bright white lighting, they can change all kinds of different colors. If one of them is actually called whoop, the Crayola Color Changer, it's going to be blue, yellow, orange, purple, green. You never know what color it's going to end up, but it's always something pretty. Given the right lighting, too low a light is brown, so yeah, there's that. Anyway, so cutting these things here, I'm going to make sure anybody else in the area stands back a good six feet because the aerosols. Perfectly, everybody wears this and a fan going the other direction. And basically, you just get right in there and just. <coughs> Stop that thing. Like this right here. Ah. And uh, anyway, then you got your frag. And I touched with the wrong hand. So you don't ever want to do that. But if the tissue is still connected, you come in with your scissors. And in the end, you get this stuff in your face, like how that almost exploded on me. You got your R water, RDI, dump it right on your face and eyes, flush everything out. Don't touch anything with your hands until it touches the bleach solution. Now I just touch the toxic globe with a good hand. Everything goes over at one spot. The only thing you don't bleach is the respirator. And the bleach in the water, very important. You don't get it on your clothes, but or on the rug. We got linoleum, we're safe people. Mm. And that is some kind of flowery fresh meadow scent. And that is Pally Toxin Poisoning and Prevention in Fragging 101. Be very careful. Obviously, rocks have different densities. This one kind of exploded. That could have gone everywhere. So sometimes the bandsaw is better, except for the residual spraying. And if you're ever cleaning with a toothbrush, you're not getting bleach in there. When you're scrubbing, you want to watch that. I don't know if you can see the mist, as toothbrushes and square brushes go back and forth, these bristles sling toxins out. So you want to have all the same safety gear for even just the basic cleaning of, say, your colony where your frag's in the tank. And when it's done, there's in the bleach and water solution, which if you didn't use your wash solution, you can add one quarter, really, two caps is fine, to about a gallon. Dump all your stuff in there, not your cold frags, obviously, is there salt water. But all your implements can be cleaned in there, sanitized, toxin-free. Now, many of you may think, ah, I don't need that. Like, I can frag without, sure. But one of Steve Donlick now tell you the story of actually what happened to his eye. It was actually, he was crying blood out of it because of palitoxins. I was. Uh, I didn't even have it spray anything physical, I didn't touch my hands to my face in any way, shape, or form. I merely dropped a, rock, a totally different rock into a bucket that had some of the pallies in it, and some of that slimy water must have come up. I didn't even feel it hit my face, but it got in my eyes. The telltale signs of palliotoxin poisoning, the flu-like symptoms, I mean the hot, cold, sweating, vomiting, diarrhea, um, constipation, um, vertigo, Dry mouth, over um, salivation, extra wax in the ears. I'm trying to think of the other things that happen. It's pretty much like every worst flu cold symptom you could have, you get in one. Worst being joint aches. I mean, you feel like you were dying a hundred times over, and everything hurts. A hot shower will make you feel better, but it causes inflammation to increase. And it, when it gets into the eye, which can not only happen through aerosols and touching the eye, but through the bloodstream, if you use the bleach early enough, it'll neutralize that and you'll never get those symptoms. But you will notice you'll cough up a lot of really weird, white, thick phlegm. It's very thick and like creamy looking. And I uh, just keep coughing this stuff up. And um, let's see, what was the other thing that happens? I mean, your eyes will turn yellow like John to see. And sometimes it's only one eye, depending on your sensitivity. In one eye, my eye, it got to the point where the inner skin, this toxin was breaking down cellular tissue in my eye, where the doctor told me I could have lost my cornea if I didn't treat it with the appropriate steroids and antibiotics in time. And it was literally skin flopping off in my eye. I was pulling out pieces of my own skin. And in any second, that could have been my eyeball I was pulling out. And it would be done, dead, I'd have no sight, and I'd be holding my 
an eyeball. Um, it can cause cancer, and it, they say it can cure cancer. It can literally change cells, this toxin, the strong toxins, and every one literally is different. But as you can see right here, if you'll zoom in, this is a puddle of that toxin, just milliliters and milliliters of pure deadly toxin sitting right there. And that's just from sitting there. Imagine you're agitating this, you're doing stuff, and all it takes, you push on one of those the wrong way, it can shoot like a squirt gun up to 10 feet across the room. But it can also aerosol mist, and you can't even see it. It's odorless, scentless, but just reveal it, and you regret that you did. So always, always, when you're done, as long as you're not touching the tank or going back in there, do the bleach thing and jump in the shower, play it safe. Alright guys, thanks for watching the video. Remember, keep it safe at Reef Talk here. Make sure you always read up on your things so you know what you're doing in the reef system and reef tanks around your hobby. This is Eddie B signing off with Steve Dolan.